And uh, our next uh, speaker uh, is, uh, is Professor Anatoly Lipopov from Institute of Solid State Physics, Zekov uh, University of Latvia. Uh, please, uh, please well, you're welcome to give us a talk. Uh, uh, Professor Popov? Okay, could you see me? Yes, we can. We can see you. You play, uh, please uh, show, show us your presentation. Так, okay, just a moment. Так, um, sorry. Okay, is it? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's uh, perfectly fine. But fine. Just Thank not, you. Not, not from the beginning. Okay, just a moment. Okay. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me present my talk, uh, Basic Properties and Distinctive Futures of Radiation Defects uh, Recombination in Functional Ceramics for Nuclear Applications. Uh, so my name is Anatoly Popov. I am from Institute of Solid State Physics, University of Latvia. And uh, during the last uh, few years, I'm main responsible and uh, principal investigator of two, uh, two big projects. Uh, first is the Eurofusion Enabled Research Project uh, concerning advanced experimental and theoretical analysis of defect evolution and structural disordering in optical and dielectric materials for fusion application. And another one is similar, uh, quite similar project concerning uh, radiation damage studies in scintillator material for high energy physics and uh, medical application. And actually we are interested in the prediction of long time radiation stability of strongly radiated uh, materials, uh, uh, just analyzing the um, defect annealing. So, uh, it's okay? Could you see me? Yes, we could see you perfectly fine. Thank you. Yes, okay. I, think I could hear you clearly. Please uh, go on. Okay, this is uh, just uh, last meeting uh, of our group uh, just before uh, pandemic uh, in uh, February. So you could see uh, maybe a lot of your friends is, uh, you can see here Professor Lushik, uh, Eugene Katomin, Professor Tersher from Karlsruhe, and uh, many other uh, colleagues from uh, Estonia and Latvia. Uh, so, um, uh, why we need uh, to study ceramic uh, materials for nuclear application. Uh, from this uh, nice uh, table, you could see that uh, all this quite familiar and quite, um, it seems well studied material like MGO, alumina, beryllium oxide, spinel, and many, many others are of uh, big interest of Eurofusion con uh, Consortium because they are used as a, uh, diagnostic components of for many, many uh, application as a ceramic for insulators, or as, uh, as a windows uh, in fiber optics and many, many others, mirrors. And uh, uh, because uh, all these um, uh, parts uh, will be installed in future uh, reactor, we need to know uh, precisely what happens with these materials uh, after a long time of of their operation. So we need to predict and to know what uh, will be their material and, uh, and many other functional properties. Uh, so, but in uh, our project and in this talk especially, I will talk only about optical properties. So uh, we know that a lot of properties and characteristics of the insulator materials are changed by radiation. Uh, but in the case of optical properties, um, we have to distinguish uh, two types of the, um, optical absorption as a permanent optical absorption and transient optical absorption because the uh, last one is important uh, if we are interested in uh, understanding any luminescence phenomena. And 
because all these materials are uh, uh, in a high radiation environment, uh, very often it's important to know what happens with uh, their characteristic when uh, we work in uh, the regime of saturation uh, of the appropriate optical absorption measurements. So this is just uh, to show you uh, uh, how look some materials which we, uh, we studied during uh, our project uh, fulfillment. So this is uh, just part of the samples which were radiated many years ago, actually in, uh, in uh, Paten reactor, because you know that it's not possible to investigate neutron radiation samples just immediately after radiation because mostly they are hot, so they are just uh, radioactive. Uh, this is just another samples from uh, um, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. You could see uh, some samples are quite big. So this is, for example, diamond windows. This is uh, broken diamond windows, which uh, uh, was not irradiated by neutrons. And there are two other one with diameter uh, uh, three centimeters, which were irradiated by different neutron uh, fluxes. And uh, there are a lot of other materials which uh, already have been investigated and we have some understanding of, uh, about their properties. But uh, we have a lot of more samples which uh, under measurements. So uh, motivation. All these materials are very important uh, for uh, uh, fusion application, and uh, it's very important for us to predict and simulate uh, the kinetic of defect accumulation and defect annealing in this material under neutron radiation and as well as under uh, other radiation like uh, iron and gamma, because uh, this is also important uh, when we are talking about uh, radiation environment. And uh, uh, if we talk uh, and if we compare metals and insulator, uh, we have to understand that uh, if in the case uh, of uh, many metals, we have only one sublattice, situation in uh, even simple oxide like MGO is very complicated because we have two, three types of, of different oxygen vacancies, uh, as well as also interstitial, and three type of uh, magnesium vacancies and precision because in the case of, uh, for example, oxygen in, in uh, vacancy, uh, we know that uh, it exists in three charge states, uh, bare oxygen vacancy, oxygen vacancy with uh, one electron, and oxygen vacancy with two electrons. And the properties uh, of these defects are different. Uh, if we compare, uh, again, a situation uh, oxide with alkali halides. For example, if in the case of alkali halides, we know that uh, almost all information about uh, uh, anion vacancy and uh, cation vacancies and interstitials uh, more or less uh, available, known, and we more or less underst uh, understand situation quite well. In the case of, of oxide, we know only uh, uh, what uh, happens with uh, defects in uh, uh, oxygen sublattice, but we have almost no interstitial and pro uh, proper, proper information about interstitials in both sublattice, uh, in oxygen and uh, cation. And uh, uh, these two tables just show you just compilation of the data for F and F plus centers in uh, uh, binary and complex oxide. F center is uh, oxygen vacancy with two electrons and F plus center is oxygen vacancy with an, uh, uh, one electron. And only for a few um, uh, binary and complex oxide, uh, information about complex uh, centers uh, is available in literature, but even there are a lot of uh, controversial results which uh, actually recently uh, were checked and uh, some data were unfortunately not confirmed. Uh, if we talk about uh, hierarchy of the uh, migration activities of uh, 
different type of uh, point defects in oxide material. This table just show you uh, some example uh, uh, um, concerning MGO. So you can see, you can see here that magnesium vacancy is the most mobile defect in this case. Uh, uh, activation energy obtained from Syria experiment are present in this table. Then uh, uh, auction vacancy uh, and the most uh, stable defect is F cent in this uh, material. But it's quite, uh, you could uh, see here that uh, this value is quite high. So it seems that uh, temperature to destroy this defect should, should be very high. But let's check what we can uh, see from the experiment. If we uh, look on the absorption spectra of MGO, this is just uh, uh, spectra obtained after uh, neutron radiation and uh, uh, two others after uh, radiation with uranium ions. And you can see here that uh, there is strong F and F plus absorption band. Only MG in MGO, these two defects uh, have almost similar optical absorption, uh, very coincide uh, uh, in uh, uh, optical absorption, but uh, show different luminescence behavior. And uh, such F centers can be produced uh, by, by fast electron radiation with energy higher than 330 kilo electron volt, also by neutron and ion radiation, and as well as thermochemical reduction. But if we will hit sample, just to uh, understand and to investigate the thermal stability, uh, we will see the following picture. In the case of uh, irradiated uh, MGO, uh, F center thermal stability is just uh, a little bit higher than 300 centigrade. While in the case of thermochemically reduced sample, the F center are stable up to 1000 centigrade. The reason is that in the case of irradiated samples, uh, when, uh, of course, F center are themselves uh, stable within the lattice, they destroy uh, by more mobile oxygen interstitials, which are created by radiation. And uh, you, could, you could see that there is uh, some difference between uh, thermal annealing and curves of uh, neutron radiate, ion and electron. And uh, uh, now there is a question, is it possible to derive from this uh, annealing curves, uh, the information about uh, migration energies of the radiation defects uh, participating in this annealing, uh, and also to understand uh, what happens with lattice uh, um, um, uh, under such strong radiation. So, uh, uh, in all um, data evaluation, we used. Uh, uh, several computers uh, code, uh, um, which we used to analyze the defect annealing and colloid formation in irradiated materials. And so we took into account uh, Frankel defect production, defect migration with diffusion coefficient determined by activation energy and an appropriate uh, diffusion coefficient. Uh, we took into account similar and uh, dissimilar radiation de uh, defect and their uh, recombination or coagulation and the uh, main calculate properties which we obtained during our uh, um, investigation is uh, a change of the also uh, uh, concentration of different type of uh, single dimmer trimmer uh, color centers colloids but also studied uh, simply uh, uh, different annealing of um, F and F plus centers with uh, auction interstitial. Uh, let's uh, firstly to compare the most simple case of MGO. Uh, uh, at first uh, figure, uh, there is F center annealing for uh, neon irradiated MGO, then electron irradiated, fast electron 1.7 mega electron volt, and neutron irradiated. So, uh, you could see that uh, even the shape of the annealing curve is different. So in the case of uh, uh, electron radiated, uh, the annealing is going more faster than in the case of uh, ion and uh, neutron. 
So the evaluation of the activation energy from these annealing curves gives uh, approximately value for electron radiation 0.7 eV, while in the case of neutron and iron radiation from this 0.23 or 0.25. So actually we know from the um, classical uh, work from, uh, from radiation physics that electron radiation fast electron produced more or less uniform defect uh, uh, distribution, while in the case of uh, iron and neutron radiation, defects are uh, produced in uh, uh, appropriate cascade of the defects. Uh, so uh, if we compare similar f center annealing uh, curves for uh, alumina, uh, we can see that uh, for different uh, radiation with different uh, neutron uh, uh, fluxes and fluences, uh, we can see that uh, activation energy could be changed from 0.3, for example, at uh, this type of example, up to 0.8 EV. So there is a large dispersion of the data, and this is certainly due to uh, fluence effects, because uh, uh, checking the, this literature data presented here, we know that for uh, uh, for last uh, case, uh, the uh, fluence was the most uh, large. Uh, so uh, uh, we performed several uh, independent experiments, and this is just one of the example where we studied a center annealing in alumina, which was irradiated at GSI uh, in Darmstadt by uranium ions. And uh, after this, uh, we carefully, uh, because for careful analysis of the uh, annealing curve, we, we need more experimental da data, not uh, point, not five, not two or three, but five or even more. So you could see uh, that after irradiation, uh, temperature was increased up to uh, 1,500 uh, Kelvin, and there is a uh, constant drop of the center concentration. So if uh, we analyze uh, uh, this spectrum for both uh, parts for F centers and for F plus centers, we can find that uh, the annealing uh, going more or less similar and uh, activation energies uh, for uh, annealing is quite low. It's much, much uh, smaller than we found in the literature. This is actually a case of the swift heavy uh, ion radiation, but uh, we know that uh, now there is uh, there are a lot of work uh, taken into account the data obtained from uh, ion radiation because uh, ion radiation is uh, more more cheap and more available and uh, in somehow could be uh, used as a emula emulator or replacement of neutron uh, irradiation for uh, scientific purposes just to uh, uh, obtain pr proper data. So if we compare um, this data obtained uh, from uh, uranium irradiated alumina with uh, many others, uh, we, we just analyze literature data um, obtained from different re research reactor uh, read by different uh, fluences. So you can, we can see that uh, data uh, could go from 0.3 up, up to 0.9 uh, EV and only highest values uh, is uh, quite close to what, uh, to what we obtain uh, from a beneath uh, calculation for auction interstitials. So we could uh, suggest that at uh, very high doses, the lattice is so disturbed that we can't uh, um, consider lattice already as a normal or regular lattice. But this is strongly dist uh, disturbed or st strongly disordered lattice, which actually confirmed by many other measurements uh, as uh, Raman or um, also uh, diffraction measurements, etc. So now it's uh, interesting to understand uh, uh, how uh, we can treat uh, uh, obtained by such way uh, different values of um, uh, activation energy and how, how we can uh, connect this data with uh, uh, 
diffusion of oxygen interstitials. Um, uh, already suggesting that we have strongly dis uh, strongly disordered uh, uh, system. Uh, we used uh, so-called meyer nidel rule, which is uh, quite uh, known in chemical kinetics and used, uh, this relation used uh, uh, many, many times in uh, to analyze uh, different diffusion processes in uh, uh, many disordered systems in chemistry, biology, and semiconductors. And uh, uh, this meyer nidel rule was uh, uh, suggested uh, before Second World War and looks like uh, presented here. So, Sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Professor, a uh, little bit uh, out of time. It's uh, three minutes left. Uh, please uh, be, be okay. sure. Okay, okay. Uh, so, um, we um, um, found that my rule was uh, were very well for uh, alumina. Then, uh, uh, it was. It will be interesting uh, to find comparison with thermostimulated data for obtained for similar materials uh, with uh, thermal annealing, but this is not the case. Uh, the values are very different, and, and we have to find the solution and the relation. Uh, in the case of thermochemically reduced materials, we found that uh, uh, FCENT are very very stable up up to one thousand five hundred centigrades, and for all F centers in the most uh, important uh, materials we obtained uh, their intrinsic uh, activation energy for f center diffusion. We also found uh, experimentally uh, formation of f center in uh, uh, colloids from f centers in MGO, and uh, were able to predict uh, uh, the formation of the uh, um, metallic colloids in alumina under irradiation and uh, our prediction uh, uh, looks uh, quite good in uh, uh, experiments which are available in literature. Uh, we also performed similar analysis for magnesium fluoride, even added data for electron irradiation, which uh, used together with uh, electron, neutron, ion. Now we can make uh, compare uh, um, uh, make uh, curves which uh, will relate all type of irradiations uh, in sense of uh, activation energy for defect annealing. Uh, similar data were obtained for the most important uh, uh, keramics for your fusion mag magnesium aluminum spinel. Uh, but uh, in the case, uh, if you compare uh, situation with uh, alumina and MGO, uh, the fluence is going uh, by, by opposite way. Uh, and uh, uh, this is probably due to uh, that in the case of uh, complex oxide, uh, the role of anti-site defect is so strong, so they are uh, uh, works as a stabilizer of the uh, F-type defects or interstitials, and in this case, uh, activation energy uh, um, going to more large, uh, more high value than in uh, MGO and alumina. And uh, a similar value for, we obtained for uh, classical scintillator as yttrium alumina granate. Uh, and um, uh, finally, this is my conclusion. So, uh, uh, actually, this is first attempt to quantify uh, kinetic of defect annealing in uh, uh, heavily radiated materials important for fusion and high energy applications. And uh, now we understand that uh, in which cases and how we could uh, derive and obtain uh, um, activation energies and disordering uh, parameters for uh, oxygen interstitials. And uh, now uh, we are constructing the uh, accumulation uh, defect curves which uh, will take into account uh, how uh, activation energy for oxygen uh, interstitial uh, change uh, during irradiation and during dis uh, disordering of the material. And uh, finally, uh, thank you very much for your attention. I, I hope you like uh, my last slide.
Yes, thank you. Uh, you're the last uh, site and all presentation is very nice and interesting. And uh, it's a uh, very pleasure that you uh, cho uh, choose uh, the color of uh, our flag. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need to mo uh, move on because we are uh, we're out of time. So we have to... Yeah, colleagues, uh, the situation is the, ne uh, the next. Uh, now must be my presentation, but we are now for late uh, for one hour and we have connection with USA and it is a little bit uh, hard uh, to be in time. That's why uh, I will miss my presentation and move here, uh, uh, this pre my presentation on the second day. So my presentation will be the second day, but now for we will uh, move uh, to the next uh, presentation after me. Mm -hmm.